Hello, my name is Sergei Malov and I'm the winner of Michael Hill International Violin Competition of 2012. We are starting a new series of guided violin practice. It's the first pilot project of the series and I really hope that you'll like it. Today I'm going to briefly talk of the opening of the Mendelssohn famous violin concerto. Definitely a must piece in the repertoire of any violinist. I hope I can give you some interesting tips about how you can practice this piece. Starting with the most basic things like intonation. The intonation in the very beginning of it. It's difficult because it starts in the second position. How can we get to the second position and start in tune. We just have to fix our hand in the first position, something that we can find blindly, and then learn and automatize this very simple shift. Then before starting you don't have any nervousness nor fear from this very first note. And you don't have to pitz it before. Then uh, another interesting thing about this very first phrase and intonation is that the shifts are rather complicated there because the position is being stretched. Check that. Huh? So almost none of the shifts is straight within the position, but the position is a little bit stretched. However, the second phrase doesn't have it, so we can keep our hand in the position very tightly and relaxedly, so we can intonate in tune. Well, I hope it gives you a little bit of an idea and inspiration. Just in the following phrase, maybe we can touch uh, the subject of the bow distribution. Check that out. So, the bow distribution can and must obey the necessities of the phrase. So I would wish, before starting to practice many hours, you would just analyze or fill in the phrase, choose the most important note, which would mean that the rest of the notes are less important, and just go towards it. So we can use more bow or less bow, intensive bow or less intensive bow, and so to form our phrases. So, bow distribution in the service of musical phrase. Some also important subject, what material do you use? In the beginning you will see the score going in, it's from the manuscript of Mendelssohn himself. And this is very beautiful situation nowadays that we can get the most of these fantastic manuscripts for free online and doesn't matter they don't have fingerings. Please spend a little bit more time inventing your own fingerings. It will bring you much much further than using a very good used steady fingerings of your teacher for example. Let's jump for the very last section of this first page where we all get very nervous and unsecure. The octaves, of course, are super difficult, but they get even more difficult if we collect a lot of tension in these passages. Because we are not quite sure how to intonate it, and it's also in an extreme position on the G string. So I would recommend to just practice 
those groups in one position. Because they are slightly different. And realizing and feeling and then automatizing that would allow us to relax the muscles and also uh, our fast memory in the brain. So that we are approaching the octaves without unnecessary tension in our fingers. About the octaves, what can I say? Of course, they are very difficult. Two tips. The basic note has already the upper note in itself as the first overtone, so maybe we should still base our octaves on the bass note. Secondly, octave is actually not so difficult because it's always within one position. So naturally the hand would fall on the octave. But the difficulty of octave passages is that every note is a shift. So if we normally practice shifts one by one, we still practice the whole passage. So we practice 10 difficult shifts in a row. Maybe we can break this not very nice tradition and just practice these shifts as a normal shift, each one by one. This is not yet a shift. Maybe more difficult because there is a string change too. This one is particularly difficult for me. I'll try to make it very short. We need to relax on the first note and keep it until the very end of it and not try to anticipate the left hand before the right hand. I know we all learned it in the childhood to do so. Maybe it's time to change. So we just do the shift simultaneously right and left. It's rather quick, but we don't have to hurry. We play two slow notes. With just a quick shift before, but we have the time to listen into it and to relax. So you can do this with uh, every shift, with every octave, with every couple of notes. The broken octaves are actually easier to intonate, but more difficult to articulate. Here is another, maybe not so uh, trivial tip for you. Make the slurs. <laughs> less round but more edgy. It will not really bother the slur nature of it, but it will make the articulation, particularly of the second note, much clearer. Well, they are just a few tips. I wish you all the best in your practices and I really hope to meet you very soon.